and a very big welcome to Brighton to Lancashire Restoration Co. In the video that will follow shortly is more installation of lintels in this crumbly old 1894 Victorian building. There is danger, the risk of exploding brickwork, falling masonry, building collapse crushing and killing Miles and myself. None of that happened, of course. Well, here we go. Let's watch the video. I hope you enjoy it. Well, it's Monday. And Monday's project is putting a lintel into this. This wall was put up in 1894. Well, that bit inside there, that, there, is what's left of a steel angle iron. And it's expanded and expanded and expanded so it's opened up the building. So our task is, is to take it out. We have propped it this time. So our task is to take it out and replace it with a concrete lintel. It's pushed the building up probably a good half an inch. We're now getting to the uh, scary point on this one just got to get that one brick out now that's had uh, Billy the Builder with his uh, unpainted steel angle iron for a lintel and very strong cement mortar above it on the red brick there on the red uh, stock brick is lime so what I'm gonna to have to do is take the bricks out above to lift that out because there's a lot of pressure on there with the uh, steel itself expanding and what it's done, it's made the whole of this wall bulge and I'm bothered that it'll burst out I'm going to take that brick out so we're going to do a controlled removal of the bricks once we've done that, again we can get a lintel in and we can get some brickwork back and make it all sound again so in this next section of film you can see me using an old wood saw now this is a method that uh, my father taught me many many years ago whilst removing internal walls. Of course you'd uh, knock a couple of bricks out, put your props in and then start sawing away. Now the reasoning behind it is, is you're not thumping at the wall with a big hammer and putting lots of vibration and shock waves through the wall because by doing that you can weaken the structure and basically end up with a collapse. Now it's hard work, don't get me wrong, but it's a great method and you can do it with internal or external brickwork providing it's done with um, or should I say constructed with lime mortar don't uh, bother trying to cut wood with your saw after because it ain't going to do it believe me um, I had to put some fencing up at home at the weekend and I'd already used this saw for uh, chopping mortar and I'd forgotten so it was a bit of a task trying to cut through this uh, timber work for the new fencing Right, so you'll see in a moment that the saw starts to uh, bind. Now, the reason for this is that the brickwork itself is under immense pressure. And this is being caused through the uh, piece of rotten metalwork that's uh, been applied to the building as a lintel. Now, if you're ever going to use uh, an angle iron as a lintel, that's fine. You know, that's not a problem. It's actually a good way of doing it. But you've got to use one that's uh, galvanised or at the very least painted with a, a bit of red oxide or something. But this one by the looks of it had just been put in raw metal and it's rotted away. You know, we're, we're next to the coast here anyway. So it's absolutely no chance whatsoever of surviving, you know, constant uh, salty air blowing on it. Right now this brick here, this one is going to start to bind. For the simple reason it's the pressures from that piece of steel pushing up now i was unsure at this stage whether it was pressure coming down or it was pressure pushing up but i did find later on that it was actually the pressures of the um, metalwork pushing upwards hence the big bulge in the wall but i did manage to get it eventually and uh, the job went well we uh, didn't lose any brake work we didn't get any cracking or movement anywhere. So the method of using an old wood saw worked, which of course I knew it would do, you know, I've done it in the past. 
but remember you know when you're propping a building if you get any any signs of movement stop and rethink you know because it'll it'll go without warning you know you won't hear a rumble or a cracking sound or anything like that before you know it you'll have bricks on top of your head you know and that's never a good thing okay so we'll let you carry on watching the video from below what's going on And as you can see here, I'm trying to uh, wedge the brick up to uh, release some of the pressure. Um, that way we can get the saw out for one and for two we can continue with the actual uh, removing of the mortar so we can release the brick. There we go, the saw is now out. You've still got to be very careful though because pressure can come back on um, at any moment. Of course, there's no signs in the joints here of anything moving as yet, but it only takes a couple of mil and it'll be down. You have to be very careful. We're now going to apply a bit of slate into the uh, joint. This will hopefully. Um, Pack the brick up so I can continue getting a bit of the mortar out. It's getting tighter and tighter as we go. So concerns were sort of setting in here um, as to why the pressure kept coming back. So at this stage I was thinking about uh, maybe going and getting another prop and trying to push the brickwork up even more. But I was a bit concerned that the brickwork, with it being bulged, had burst out and we'd end up losing the building. Well, we managed to, uh, to get the brickwork out. There was immense pressure from the iron lintel that was in there. There's remnants of it there. Rotten as a pair, it's a rotten old building this, and that's what's left of it there. Look how thick it's gone in places. But all this brickwork now, it's all, all sat back down where it should be, which is good. But I was a bit concerned that the pressure was coming from above. But then on closer inspection, I found that it was the uh, the rotting metal that was pushing it up. Right, we're going to put the lintel in next and get it all back together and safe again. You've really got to know what you're doing with these rotten old buildings. You know, they could go on you any minute. And you, you've got tons and tons and tons of masonry above you. You know, we've got another another floor plus a great big apex above us here. But when you get the experience and you learn what you can and can't do, it's, it's not that bad, but this one was particularly scary because we were getting pressures coming from somewhere and I could not figure out for the life of me where they were coming from. Plus there's a huge bulge in this wall, um, which I think has been caused by the steel lintel that's, uh, that's expanded. Everything seems to be in order now, nothing's moved, so we're going to put this lintel in, get the brickwork back up and get it packed and then we know that the building's safe again. And this is also, they can change this window down here. 
uh, the window charts, and quite rightly so, had said that um, they're not getting involved with it until it's made safe. So that's what we're here doing right now. All this was built in uh, 1894, like I say, and it's never really been maintain maintained even properly in all those years. Um, you know, it's somebody's had a go at pointing it at some stage, and as you can see there, they've just tapped the tiny joints and made them open uh, with a hammer and chisel and smeared a bit of sand and cement on top, which has long since gone. Anyway, we'll put it all back together again and make it solid, and uh, that's all a bit done on this one, thank God. And the zip by magic, it's all back together and safe again. Isn't that correct, Miles? Yep. So today we've got Miles to give me a lift, so it has gone a lot easier. We'll put a smaller lintel in this one, or a thinner one. Um, technically, it didn't need the big one. Um, on the other one I did. I was just going to do it so it looked like a piece of stone, but uh, way to the damn things. I'm not dragging them up here again. Um, because I don't think these people are particularly bothered about how it looks, going up the state of the building. But no cracks above, so we've got a way of messing about with an old rotten building yet again. Alright, well we'll leave it at that for a, a bit, I'll uh, go and have a bit of lunch and then point up. Right, well that's pretty much the uh, the end of this one now, just got to give it a brush in a while, and just uh, a bit of a dust off the bricks. Now the reason the lintel is set back slightly is because we're going to put a coat of uh, mortar onto it to make it look a bit more like a piece of stone and um, so it looks a bit more appealing from down on the ground so we're going to cut this one short today now uh, but we'll pick up again tomorrow with some other bits and pieces I'm um, just going to go and have a, a bit of a site meeting at a church to look at repointing um, a bell tower so we shall see you tomorrow well I've just popped up to have a look at this bell tower Wants a bit of pointing right round it apparently. We've done the calculations on it and the costings, but we've just got to find out about scaffold etc. Put it all in and see if we uh, do in the contract. Fingers crossed we do. I've done work on this church before. Um, of course it's uh, a grade two listed. So it's uh line mortar at uh, ten paces as normal. Well I thought we were done with this uh, lintel business but I just found another one up on the top level and it was at this stage that my heart sank when I realized there was yet another window to sort out the brickwork is just crumbling away on this building even this little bit under here it's just falling apart years and years and years of lack of maintenance so what I've decided to do with this one is to get a piece of angle iron to put in to act as a temporary lintel so we can remove all of the brickwork below and change the lintel safely. So we're just cutting a piece of steel down that I'm going to use as a temporary support. We're going to place it over the opening like a lintel. I'm now just cutting a slot into the brickwork to insert the steel. This uh, isn't going to go the whole way into the brickwork because obviously we need to remove it uh, when we've done the brickwork below. So what we're doing here now is we're cutting a slot into the brickwork. I'm just going to deepen it up a bit by hand because the grinder will only go in so far. So we'll deepen it up and then we're going to put a piece of steel, which is angle iron, into that slot. And the theory is it's going to act as a temporary lintel 
so we can take out all of this and that is so we can replace this with a new concrete lintel let's do it well we've got the steel in I'm still a bit unsure about it so I might just put a prop in up there but it's a absolute nightmare this we've got to take a load of brickwork down because there's no way it's going to stay up it all collapsed before we even started so for safety reasons I've taken that out I'm trying to save that bit up there to be honest well we're back together that's another one done that's been a hell of a day getting that back together it's not level it's not plumb there's bulges in it all on the original of course but uh, managed to do it we've got no uh, no problems up top there and there we go I'm not even having lunch yet look lunch is still in the box I'm starving I made a brew about two hours ago not had it here's Miles there's the sunset there we go that's it we're done see you tomorrow did you like that if you did give us a thumbs up if you subscribe this week Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I really do. I do like a fresh subscriber. If you've not subscribed yet, please feel free to do so. Just hit that subscribe button below. Right, so this week, it's been dangerous, downright scary at times, extremely stressful and very tiring. Caught in everything from the ground floor up to the top of that scaffolding time and time again takes it out to you. Anyway, to conclude this week, the job's now done. The building is once again structurally sound. All the bits we've done. Don't try and copy what we do when it comes to propping buildings. It is not conventional. We're not winging it. We do have many years of experience. And these methods I use are tried and tested. I know a lot about these old buildings and my profession is masonry, conservation, preservation, repair. It's what I do for a living. So if you're a DIYer, a bit of a novice builder, a handyman, this kind of work is not for the faint hearted. It can be dangerous at times. Anyway, like I said, hope you enjoyed and we shall see you next week in another episode of Messing About with Old Buildings. See you next week.